Hey guys, it's Monday Madness with me. I hope you guys had a fantastic weekend. Um, this weekend was Mother's Day. Hope you mamas got some rest. Um, so on Saturday, I'm just gonna get right into it. Saturday, we had an amazing Bible study. Um, we talked about Hannah and her boldness and confidence in her prayer. Um, and then Pastor on Sunday went right into Hannah. And it was just like an aha moment. And uh, you know, it was just awesome to piece it all together and just have the weekend full of nothing but her story. And then just focusing on how strong she was in her prayer and her boldness, um, that she was so faithful in her prayers and that she meant every word that rolled off of her lips, you know, um, whether she was saying it out loud or whispering it in the temple. Um, and you know, like she made a vow to God that if he gave her a son, she would dedicate him to the Lord. And she did that. Um, and it was just her keeping her side of the promise to him, just as God keeps his promises to us. But this is all going to roll right into this Saturday. Um, where we're going to be talking about Rahab. She was a prostitute who had a lifelong past of struggle and just emotional baggage and physical baggage, things like that. And um, God put her in a certain situation and she was able to use her faith. No matter what, who she was or what she went through, she did have faith in, in Christ. And she really showed that um, whenever she took the bold move to protect her family, knowing that they could have gotten killed, but she didn't know the circumstances. Um, and she took that chance. And we'll get more into that um, on Saturday. But as I was reading my Bible study, um, I went ahead and did two days so I could get ahead and prepare the, the teachings for you guys on Saturday. And um, it just got me to thinking about um, our past and how we, as humans, we hold on to our past. And it feels like our past is just, it's weighing us down and it's always there in the back of our mind. And we can't just fully let it go that, you know, it, it our past can make us second guess ourselves. It can make us second guess one another um our past can haunt us it can trigger certain things um in the present that makes us go back in time but really with this story it makes me think of a certain situation you know certain situation like us and uh like me in this bible uh study and teaching these ladies you know i never thought from my past and everything that I've went through and all the struggles and all the things that I knew were not right, but I did them anyway. I never thought I would be here teaching you guys, being able to um, just be a disciple of God's word and just share the gospel with you guys. I never thought that I would be that person, that I would be that woman that would be confident um, you know, in talking about him and just don't care what people say. I might stutter. I might trip over my words. I may not brush my hair, but I, and talk to, and talk about him, but that's just me. I'm real. This is who I am. You guys keep coming back. So obviously there's something good going on here, but, um, you know, I didn't grow up in a church family. I didn't grow up going to church. I didn't, you know, it wasn't until my late 20s that I really got into church, you know, and um, I struggled with issues with alcohol, you know, I struggled with issues with having a mouth like a sailor, you know, um, in and out of bad relationships, not just um, with boyfriends, but just, you know, with friends and things like that and being involved in the wrong people. Um, I never thought that I was gonna break free. I never thought that I was gonna have the freedom that I have now and the peace that I have and be able to do what I do freely and so excited with a passionate heart and a fire in my heart for Jesus. Uh, but I can, and it's all because of God's mercy. And each one of us has the ability to get to have his mercy, but you have to let him in your heart. You have to let him in. You have to let him break down walls. You have to let him build up confidence. Build that's something that we're talking about in youth. Joseph's sermon last night just was like 
as if it was just pinpointed in me. I know it was for the students. I know it was for the students and for everything we were going through, but I just felt like he was speaking directly to me that we have to have the confidence in Christ so that we can glorify him through ourselves. And I mean, I think that's what, you know, this all just kind of gets back to is we need to have confidence in ourselves. So no matter what we did yesterday, no matter what we did last week or the or years before, all that matters is right now. All that matters is what we're doing right now. And as long as we are lev living every single day to try to glorify God to the best of our abilities, then that's all he wants. That's all he wants. But just know that his grace covers you. At any little thing that you do, any little sin, you're forgiven immediately. As long as you let him in. As long as you let him in control of your life. You will never feel the guilt. You will never feel the burden of, you know, being tied down or weighed down by your past. Because when you let Christ into your heart, you're giving him all those burdens. You're laying them at his feet. You're laying it at the cross. However you want to look at it. But you're set free. And you have a clean slate. And you have, it's like day one all over again. Whenever you finally let him in your heart. And let him restore everything from your head to your toes. Inside and out. Um, but it also, our uh, theme verse is Jeremiah 29, 11. And um, I wanted to just share that with you guys. And I want you to think about it. How God is, you know, what... What do you think his plans are for you right now in the, the exact moment that you're at in life? What do you think his plans are for you? If he if you don't feel like he's moving in your life, start praying. Start start praying that he starts moving because if you pray for him to move, he is going to move you. He's going to stretch you. He's going to make you uncomfortable. He's going to do all these things so that you have the opportunity to glorify him. But um, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to, for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and hope. Hope is such a powerful word. And we need to know, we need to believe that our hope is in him, through him. And as long as we have hope, we will have grace. And I want to just leave you guys with that. And just think about where you're at right now in life, in your spiritual life. If you're just new to this, I want you to think about the things you've been through. Things where you want to go through. Where you want to be a year from now. Where you want to be six months from now. Um, I want you to think about that. And how God, how you can do it with God by your side. Um, I look forward to Bible study on Saturday morning. It'll be at 9 a.m. Uh, the information has been posted um, on our Facebook page, page, Fit for Jesus. If you don't have it, comment below. We will give you the information. Um, you know, I want you to also let me know how you're doing. Uh, comment below. Let us know how you're doing. If you need prayer, make sure you put that below. Send us a message. Send us a text message. We want to pray for you if that's what you need. We're here together. We're here for you. Um, you guys have a fantastic week. Look forward to Jen's check-in uh, video on Wednesday. Martha's follow-up Friday video on Friday. And just throughout the week, just look, just um, you know, be on the lookout for all the encouragement things and Bible studies and uh, big news coming out and things like that. I love you guys. Have a fantastic week.